In this video, I will be introducing you to the NetKiller Barcode Scanner 2.0 by demonstrating install and setup procedure. NetKiller Barcode Scanner works with both Google Apps and personal Gmail accounts. If you're a Google Apps user, the administrator within the Google Apps domain has to download the application from the Google Apps Marketplace. Once the application has been installed in the Google Apps domain, anyone in the domain can access the barcode scanner by going to the More menu in Gmail. As for the Gmail users, you can install NetKiller Barcode Scanner by going to the Chrome App Store or going to the address that is displayed on the screen now. To access the application from your smartphone, just go to the following address from your smartphone that is being displayed on the screen now. Then please log in using your Google Apps credentials. When you go to the website, it might ask you the permission for accessing some information and, and permission for offline access. Another way to access the application from your smartphone is by going to the barcode website and scanning the QR code with your phone. You will need an appropriate scanner application for your Android or iOS devices to do this. Before you begin using the barcode scanner, you need to set up your default settings. NetKiller Barcode Scanner uses Google Spreadsheet as database, so all your information is kept conveniently in Google Sheets. Now I'm going to quickly walk through the form setup procedure. Go to the following link on your smartphone or your PC. However, it would be faster to set this up on a computer. In the main screen, click Create New Spreadsheet button located in the middle. This will take you to the Create a New Form page. In the Create a New Form page, you can add various fields from the drop-down menu located in the middle. In this video, we're having a context where we're trying to create a sheet for inventory management. First of all, Let's add a barcode field by clicking this Add field. You can see that a barcode field has been added. By clicking this plus icon located on the top far right, you can adjust the properties of the field. You can see the field title, the field default value, and whether to make this field required before you can submit the sheet, or if you can edit this field or not. Currently it is required and it is disabled meaning that you can not edit this once the form has been submitted through your smartphone. Second, we will add last updated field, a text field, a drop down list, another text field, and lastly, a radio button. And let's take a look at how we can edit this to suit your needs. In this context, we're trying to create an inventory management spreadsheet. So let's change this last updated field title to timestamp. You can see that the field default value is adjusted to the current time. So when you create this whole sheet and start scanning, it'll leave the current time when you scan the barcodes. The third field is a text field. We're going to change this to the item name. And let's change this to required. And the fourth field, which is a drop down list, as you can see from the field type, let's change this to location. Now, since this is a location value with a drop down menu field type, you can add options. And let's make this required too. 
In the fifth field, which is another text field, we're going to make this into employee name. The last field, which is the radio buttons, we're going to change this into The last item is the radio button. We'll rename the field to inventory and add several options. The first option is in, the second one will be the out, and the last one will be processing. Once everything has been added in, let's preview the form to see what it looks like when you actually start using this in your smartphone. Okay, you can see that there's barcode on the top, which will be automatically put in when you scan a barcode, a timestamp, item name, location, and you can see the drop down menu, employee name, and inventory where you can check. The status. You can see that fields that are marked required are reflected when you selected required field property. When you're done making the changes, you can click Save as Draft to continue to edit the form later. So let's go ahead and do this. And you can say that it says you can edit the draft afterwards. Draft saved successfully. So let's go back and let's look at the create new spreadsheet from dynamic form. And you can see that all the changes are saved. If you're done creating the form, click the complete and save button. It'll prompt you that once the form has been saved, you cannot edit them afterwards. However, you can email support at natkiller.com to make the changes or reset the entire process. Now, if you completed creating the form, you can find the spreadsheet has been created and it prompts you to go to Google Drive Let's go ahead and do it. Here you can see that a spreadsheet has been created with the title Natkiller Barcode Scanner 2.0. If you go inside your spreadsheet and click the Barcode Scanner tab, you can see that all the field titles are created in the first row. And lastly, let's go back and we can see that there's different menus once you have created the spreadsheet. The first one is Manage Users and the second one is Use Mobile to Scan Barcode. Let's go to Manage Users to quickly see how it's managed. You can see that there's a list of users here in the screen and by checking these users and saving it, we'll activate those users. It's, it's very simple. All right, let's quickly look at what NetKiller Barcode Scanner looks like in action. So we're in a Safari browser in iPhone, and let's enter the address. And you can see that it's asking for your permission to allow have offline access. And once you allow it, it's going to transition to the main page of Scanner. Now you can see that there's only two menus you can choose from. The first one being Manage Users, the second one being Click Here to Scan. The Create option is gone because you already created a spreadsheet. And if you want to make changes or reset the spreadsheet, please send an email to support at netkiller.com. Now let's go ahead and click Click Here to Scan. And it's going to prompt you, open in pick to shop You press Open. You can see the app has been activated. So we have a sample barcode page. 
And once you align the red line in the middle of barcode, it loads right up. And you can see that the screen has loaded the barcode correctly and the timestamp has been put in. Now let's add the item name. Item number one. And this is from the office. The employee name is Dean. And inventory out. And we have to click Submit Changes to make the changes. And it's going to load up. All right, and now let's check if the changes have been applied to the master spreadsheet, which acts as the database. All right, we're back at the Nekula Barcode Scanner 2.0 spreadsheet in your Google Drive. And we can see that the changes have been applied to the database. The barcode number has been input and the timestamp when it has been scanned. And also the item name, location, employee name, and inventory status all have been entered automatically from your phone to the spreadsheet. And we're sure that you can do wondrous things with our Nekula barcode scanner, whether it would be inventory management or be the library or whatever um, solutions or methods that you can think of. And this has been Dean from Nekula and has been my pleasure to prepare this video. And we hope to return with more informative video in the future. Thank you for watching.